when we look at the planter and specific items to control uh, the planting, uh, control our rates, control our clutches, our sections, there are certain things or items on the planter that we have to look at first. The first item that we're looking at on the left side is what we call the planter monitor module or known as the PMM. The PMM you will notice on, on the uh, right or left side here uh, has three indicator lights on it. Uh, those lights will be on all the time. Should something happen, we have a fault code or an error, please refer to your operator's manual for help or diagnostics there. The PMM is the main controlling module on the planter. What that means is all the sensors on the planter, your row unit sensors, your shaft sensors, any of your auxiliary sensors such as your pneumatic down pressure, your bulk fill pressure, your vacuum in inches, all those items are controlled or sent into the PMM. The PMM then sends that information to your display in the cab so you can look at those specific functions or controlling items. But the PMM will be on your left side here with the lights and it is the main controlling module on the planter. It sends information from the planter to your display in the cab. When we look at the right side, we are looking at what we call the product control module or better known as the PCM. The PCM we would only have on the planter if we are controlling a product. So by controlling a product we are talking about hydraulic drive or our electric clutches. So if we have those items on the planter, hydraulic drive and electric clutches, we will have a PCM. If we are a ground drive planter, we would still have a PCM to control our clutch section. So the, the, the PCM controls two things, controls our hydraulic drive and also controls our clutch sections. The PCM reports to the PMM so we know which sections are shutting on and off correctly. That information is then sent to our display in the cab as displayed on our bar graph. The next component in our 3000 series ISO bus identification are what we call the implement switches. The implement switches are a basic status switch of the machine or of the implement. It tells us whether the implement is down in the planting position or if the planter is raised up in a turnaround or a field position. We use two of them on the planters. They are located on the row units and they point at or towards the parallel arms of the, of the row unit. So their basic function is to tell us a status of the implement. Once it sees metal, hence the parallel arm, the light will come on and it will tell us the machine is down in the planting position. As we raise the planter up, the parallel arm falls away or downward from the implement switch and the light goes out. We use two of them on the machine to give us a status of the planter, whether we're in the planting position or we're up in a field turnaround or a raised position of the planter. No matter if you have electric clutches or electric clutches with hydraulic drive, you will have implement switches on your machine or planter. Uh, adjustment is very simple and easy to do. There are two jam nuts on the implement switch itself. To make the implement switch properly, work properly, the planter needs to be lowered into the planting position and the sensor pushed in towards the parallel arm until the light comes on. Once the light comes on, you will set your jam nuts to hold the sensor firmly in place. Typically, you will see approximately a quarter inch air gap between the sensor and your parallel arm for adjustment. The next component that we're going to talk about is what we call our motion sensor or jump start sensor. The jump start sensor is located on the planter transport wheels typically. Uh, third one from the left on a 3600 or 3660. The motion sensor or jump start sensor is used to get our hydraulic drive turning when we start from a dead stop such as backing up into a corner and starting a brand new field. The, the motion sensor or jump start sensor is in the system to help alleviate the lag or delay in our GPS system. You will only have a jump start sensor on planters that are equipped with hydraulic drive. The jump start sensor is made up of two components. You can see the black pulse wheel that is bolted to the hub along the rim of the machine. 
Down below in the blue box, you will notice a sensor that is sticking out or pointing towards that pulse wheel. The gap between the pulse wheel and the sensor should be approximately an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch air gap and must be clean. If mud packs in there, we need to keep that clean so we gather our pulses or our motion when we first take off for planting. Once again, the jump start sensor is used on hydraulic drive machines only and to help us alleviate the gap or lag of our GPS speed. The next component that we are going to talk about is what we call the encoder. You will only have an encoder if you have hydraulic drive on your planter. If you are a contact drive machine, you will not have the encoder. Encoder is only used for hydraulic drive equipped machines. The encoder is located on your hydraulic drive shaft, the opposite end of the motor. The encoder is basically a shaft RPM sensor. It counts the revolutions of our drive system. What the encoder does is when we go into our display and we pick our crop type, what type of meter we have, and what type of population we have, the display then tells the product control module that that shaft has to turn X amount of RPM to achieve our population or our rate. So what the encoder does is it counts those revolutions and reports back to the product control module telling us that that shaft needs to speed up or slow down to achieve our population or our rate. Once again, the encoder is only used on planters or machines equipped with hydraulic drive. The next component we're going to look at is what we call the PWM valve of the hydraulic drive system on the planter. The PWM valve is located directly in front of your hydraulic drive motor and valve block. The purpose or function of the PWM valve is it controls oil flow to the motor. So it helps us to control our rate or our population. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. So the valve is opening and closing all the time allowing oil flow through to the motor to achieve our rate or population. The large black knob that you see on the end of the stem sticking towards the front of the planter, that is our manual override valve. In a normal operating position, that manual override valve will be fully out. If, should we need to check hydraulic flow or supply to our hydraulic drive motor, if we cannot get a drive to turn, we would come back with our hydraulics engaged on the planter, the drive system set up, we would slowly start to turn the valve in. As I said, it's a manual override. So as we start to turn the valve in, our drive components should start turning. If they do not, we know we have a hydraulic flow problem from our tractor. If they do start turning, then we know it's either an electrical or a setup condition in our display. So what we're looking at here is called our PWM valve. It is only equipped on planters with hydraulic drive and it is a control valve for our hydraulic drive system so we can achieve our rates or populations.